Good afternoon, everyone. High protein hard wheat, scarce after two years of poor harvest in the U.S. Premium of 75 cents to a dollar a bushel so you can get bread. Carbon taxes increase global CO2. So that four trillion of global tax they're looking for, all it does is make everything offshore where they have less environmental regulations. A look at the snow cover 2016 compared to 2017. Fall North American snow extent up. Fall Northern Hemisphere snow extent. Bitcoin futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange opening this morning, the five lot. And guess what? They're going to be trading that on NASDAQ next year as well. The institutional money is coming in a tidal wave. Get ready. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. Headline out on Reuters a few days ago. Baker's farmers struggle to make any dough on poor wheat crop. Despite worldwide grain gluts of poor quality wheat, high protein wheat is scarce after two years of poor harvest in the U.S. And the U.S. farmers planted the smallest winter wheat crop in more than a century. And you know, after those blizzards in the Kansas wheat tour, even though there was still some yield coming out of those fields with that late season blizzard earlier this spring, and as would be expected, low levels of protein in the wheat. This is something I talked about and others have spoken about since day one. The amount of wheat that's going to come out will be less protein rich, which means we're going to need more tonnage to equal the same. Now they're actually adding gluten into the poor wheat, which is driving up the cost. There's a premium of 75 cents to a dollar a bushel. And remember, futures contracts are always 5,000 bushels. So if you're going to be trading any types of futures like these farmers do, new report out National Economics Editorial, carbon taxes increase global CO2 emissions, period. So that $4 trillion that Al Gore and his ilk were trying to skim from us, talking about how we were driving the planet into a hothouse, which hasn't happened in how many years now? The piece even describes it as a money grab disguised with good intentions. Well, what really happened is it raises global carbon emissions because so many companies then offshore into areas that have relatively few environmental regulations. Case in point, I'll just let the picture do the speaking for me here. This is what you get when you drive prices so high that companies move to other countries to do business. Also continue on in the report, emissions from increased production of internationally traded products have more than offset the emissions reductions achieved under the Kyoto Protocol. And then it even goes further with a great chart here. I've linked everything below. You can chase down all of these stories here. World Bank also reveals developing countries produce far more carbon per dollar of economic output. So when you send American and Canadian and European businesses running to China because it's too expensive to operate in our home nations, well, they produce far more CO2 to get you the same junk back to our countries that's so disposable and we just pitch into the landfill every couple years. And Al Gore telling us, oh, snow would be a thing of the past. Your children will never know what snow is. Let's look at the fall North American snow extent. Wow, my children will never know what snow is because it's increasing, I guess. Fall Eurasian snow extent. And then the combined fall Northern Hemispheric snow extent. Now, some of you like graphs, some of you like charts. Let's go to the visual. Here we are. Monthly snow, November 2017. This is how much is in the Northern Hemisphere. Compare that with 2016. You can see North America. Let's lay those side by side. You can take a look. 2016 to the left, 2017 to the right. This is November snow extent. This does not include December, which we've seen some massive snows in this last little bit. So that European part is going to be absolutely completely colored blue by the end of December. But you can see there's more snow coverage across that border with the United States and Canada this year. A little bit less out in eastern China. This is the actual departure from normal. And as I've said before, I've even written articles on Medium about this. 
Plan is to unveil Bitcoin futures, allow fund managers to use it to refill their pension funds and to give you more money so you can buy that more expensively priced bread and wheat in the future and you won't complain and go on the streets and riot against whatever government that you or country that you are a citizen of. Here we go. Bitcoin takes bigger Wall Street stage with smooth CME debut. Did you notice there wasn't such a price jump this morning either when it launched at 5 a.m.? CME got off to a faster start with their five-lot contract. Remember, this is a bigger institutional size level contract compared to the CBOE's mini-lot one contract. They've traded 221 times or 221 contracts in the first hour. So how's it going so far? The first week, 10,000 contracts, which means 10,000 individual Bitcoin contracts traded on CBOE. But remember, CME is five in a contract, five Bitcoins of value in a contract. CBOE is one. That's why they call it a mini. Continuing on, where can you immediately get these Bitcoin futures? And I know a few of you are going to wonder. Here it is. TD Ameritrade is going to unveil it. E-Trade, eventually. And Interactive Brokers. And then who's going to offer futures contracts in the future? That's a lot of futures in the word. Anyway, NASDAQ is planning to introduce Bitcoin futures next year. I'm not a financial analyst. And I'm not giving you financial advice. My personal opinion, but we're going to see absolute huge gains when the institutional money rolls in. The valuation of around $600 billion at the moment or $550 billion, depending on the swing for the hour and the, and the day here. This is absolutely going to eclipse 10 trillion by the end of next year, minimum. You got the millennials flowing into this because they find a store of wealth in cryptocurrency, not in traditional assets, stocks, or gold. That whole money wave's going into there. And now we got institutional investors going to be flowing in and just buying anything that moves that they think of value going forward. You can use these gains to get ready for the grand solar minimum. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.